Let me just, uh, I just want to talk to you just a little bit about this uh, shooting thing. I know you guys heard, heard about a lot of it, but just some of the names. Charlotte Bacon was six years old. Daniel Barton was seven. Rachel Dubino was 29, she's one of the teachers. Olivia Engel was six. Josephine Gray, Gay was seven. Anna Marquez Green was six. Dylan Hockley, six. Don Hawks Sprung was 47. Madeline HSU, I don't know how you spell that. She was six. Catherine Hubbard was six. Chase Kowalski, seven. Jesse Lewis, six. James Rattoli, six. Grace McDonald, seven. Anne Marie Murphy, 52. Emily Parker, six. Jack Pino, six. Noah Posner, six. Carolyn Perviti, six. Jessica Ricos, six. I don't know how to spell it. I don't know how to pronounce the lady's name. A V I E L L E. Emily, I don't know how to spell it. Richmond was six. Lauren Rousseau was 30. Mary Sherlock, 56. Victoria Soto, 27. Benjamin Wheeler, six. Allison Wyatt, six. And that comes from the Connecticut State Police's uh, record. Things are different. Things are different. Uh, when we were young, Joey, when we were young, <laughs> we'd go to TGY, put $50 behind, walk out with a 22 and shells and just walk out the door. Take you about five minutes. If you have $50, you go, it's not like that anymore. It's not like that. Things are different. Things have changed. I, I, I've preached in here a hundred times. I know it's like somebody has switched the switch and what was good is evil was evil was good. Yeah. It's time. I'm going I'm to continue on what I was preaching last Sunday morning. I'm going to finish it about possess the land. I was talking to Michael about this in the back and uh, just tagging in the back here. And uh, one thing, Mike, Mike used to be in charge of the gang stuff in, in, in the city of Seminole. That's what he was trying, that's what his, one of his jobs was, is to take care of that stuff. And uh, what that is, how many have you noticed the shoes, the shoes on the power lines? Have you noticed that? Okay. That is their marking their territory, where they are. And this is another way of saying this is theirs. I'm just going to tell you that this is God's. And, uh, and, you know, I want you to understand that I'm not afraid of it. Uh, just not. Uh, I don't. I don't have a death wish or anything like that. But I'm not afraid. Uh, they can do what they want to do. They can say what they want to say, and they can. You know, people say, "Well, I don't want to get killed." You know, you're a man, aren't you? I'm just, there's a lot worse things than dying. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just not afraid. They need God. We're in a good spot. Because <laughs> light, is, you know, no darkness can stay where any light is. No matter if you strike a match in the middle of a pitch black cave, you can have light. And so we need to be the light and the salt. I want to do the little routine, the police report, paint over, give them a clean slate, they can spray again. It's okay. We're going to have to, things are different. We've got to possess the land. It's our land. It's God's land. I, I thought I thought we served a God that owned everything. And I have a hard time with little punks. I do. I have a hard time with a flat bill punk. I, I can't stand it. I can't. I can't. have a hard time with that. They, they, they want to spray paint on my church building. I have a hard time with that. This is God's house. Hey, their property. This is God's house. And you are part of God's people. So it's your house as well. It's where your daddy lives. This is where your daddy dwells. This is where your daddy dwells every Sunday and Wednesday and every other day of the week. The two or three gathered together there, I shall be also. This is, a, this is a place where God said, I'll meet with you. This is a place where God says, I'm going to be there at 6 o'clock tonight. Are you going to be there? I'll be there at 6 o'clock on Wednesday. Are you going to be there? I'll be there at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning. Are you going to be there? That's where, this is God's house and God's place. And this is, this is not, this is not the possession of the devil. This is not God, this is not the devil's territory. This is not the devil's city. This is not the devil's street. 
This is where I grew up. This is it's personal to me. This is where I grew up. This is, I, knew, I know every little trail, every, every back alley way to get anywhere in this neighborhood. I know, I know, you can, I know how to get from, from, uh, from Jefferson Street all the way to Hollis Street and never use a road. You just go down the creek and go through the, little, the, the runoff drains. I mean, it's not like we never did that stuff. I mean, I know every inch of this, this but I know how to get the alley back behind Dennis's house and go to, the, go to another ditch and then you're down you're never, and no one ever see you. This is personal to me. This is, my, this is not the devil's place. This is not the devil's city. I, I've lived here all my life. This is not the devil's place. We're supposed to possess this land. We're supposed to have a, to possess a land. You got to set up a homestead on it. Right. You got to dig a well. Amen. You got to plant a garden. You got to build a house. You got to have some. You got to have some kind of some kind of roots down in it. You got to. You can't just show up and say, "Oh, I'm gonna possess this," and the devil say, "Oh, okay," and leave. You gotta have you gotta have some kind of some kind of roots in the thing. You gotta dig down in there and, and dig down deep. And, and if we're gonna we're gonna read some scripture here in just a second, but Joshua chapter one verse eleven. We'll read that real fast about possessing the land. I'm sorry if I'm undignified. Take my jacket off. I'm not burning up. Amen. I, I, I I'm not very formal. I'm sorry. I'm just not. I don't know how to be professional preacher guy. I don't know how to do that. I'm just not going to be. And that, that's what you're looking for. I'm not him. And so I just, I don't know. How to, I can do it if I have to in a, in a, set, a setting of a, a funeral or a wedding. But if I'm just going to, if I'm just going to preach, I'm just going to preach. Here we go. Pass through the host and command the people saying, prepare you victuals. For within three days shall pass over this Jordan to go and to possess the land which the Lord our God giveth you to possess it. Go to Joshua 18 and 3. We're going to finish up this today. And Joshua said unto the children of Israel, How long are you slack to go possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers hath given you? Keep your finger there because we're going back to that. Joshua said to the children of Israel, How long are ye slack to go to possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers hath given you? Can I share a few things with you? And, and, and please understand, God, uh, people that are, are newer to our church, when I talk about our forefathers and you're like, I don't have any idea who these people are, uh, please don't be offended at me. But a lot of people do know who they are and you'll get to know them. My reputation alone, maybe. But a lot of people do. Please don't get upset with me if you're like, I don't have any idea who Susie Foster is. I, I know you don't know who that is, but just understand the spirit that which she brought to this church. You may not know who Fern Welch was, but just remember the spirit that she brought to this church. You may not know who Hubert Welch was, but remember the spirit they brought to the church. You may not remember Sister Trina Smith. You may not, some of you guys didn't, didn't know her, but just remember the spirit and what she brought to this church. Remember those people. Remember Sister Coetta Turner, what she brought to this church. Remember those things. And, and, and just, if, if you don't, there's a lot of people that don't remember those people. But they just remember the spirit in which they brought and what they had to, to give to this place. Okay? Okay, good? Okay, so I want to talk to you for just a little bit about, about being what God has called us to be. I, I talked about a little bit of this about last Sunday. But when God gives you a choice, and neither choice is easy, can you make the right choice? When your choices have consequences, can you make the right choice? When your choices are going to matter for real, can you make the right choice? When your choices are going to split friendships, can you make the right choice? Jesus said, I didn't come to put everybody together. I came to divide everything. I came to split time right up, wide open. He split, listen, he's the only one ever split time. A, D, and B, C. Split it. He didn't bring time together. He split time. He split. He said, "I'm going to put mother against mother-in-law. I'm mean, so, uh, sister, uh, daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. I'm going to put father against father against son. I'm going to put a husband against wife. Uh, there's going to be a division there. So when I ask you this, can you make the right decisions when God Himself puts a decision in front of you, and you say, I don't know what to do. For if I do the right thing, 
this is the consequence. But if I do the wrong thing, then this is the consequence. Are you able to stand? Do you have enough word in you to stand upon the word of God? Do you have enough of God in you to stand and say, I'm going to do what's right no matter if it costs me every friend I've ever had? Yeah. I don't know. Sometimes. I don't know sometimes if we're able to stand. If it's going to cost me everything. Is it going to cost me everything that I've ever I've worked my whole life for. And I built up this little nest egg of everything that I want. But if I make the decision to serve God. Then I may have to give up some of this. In order to get him. In order to possess the land. I may have to do something radical. I may have to live what it is I say I believe in. I may have to give when it hurts. I may have to do for the poor, but though I don't like the poor. I may have to do for the drug addict, though the drug addict needs to be saved. I may have to do for the alcoholic, although the alcoholic needs to quit drinking. I may have to do for somebody I don't agree with. But still yet, can I do it to possess the land? God himself said, I'll give you the ability to do some things. I'll give you the ability. He said, fear not, for I am with you, is what he told Joshua. Fear not, for I am with you. I know he's talking to Israel here, but the physical Israel is a spiritual church. And Joshua said to the children of Israel, how long are you slack to go possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers have given you? How many preachers have come through this area? How many preachers have stood right here? How many messages and tongues and interpretation have gone out? The time is drawing near. The time is drawing near. The time is closed. The time is at hand. How many? Thousands? How many preachers have stood here? Hundreds of us have stood here and proclaimed that we've got to possess the land. God is doing something. God is doing something right now. Brother Turner had the dream of the white substance coming out of every place of this, uh, going into the, all the city. That was, he had that dream 30 years ago. 30 years ago. He's still up. Still, we're, we're yet to see it come to pass. So we're working on it as hard as we can. But hear me just, just, a, just a few minutes this morning. Hear me just a few minutes. How, are you ready to do something radical? To do something to do what God has called you to do? Are you ready to? Joey said this morning in, in, uh, in a Sunday school class that Jesus was not just meek and lowly all the time. How I describe Jesus is this. He was a revolutionary. Do you know what those guys that signed the Declaration of Independence, they did? They signed their death warrant. They were revolutionaries. They caused a revolt. They did something different. They said, we're not going gonna to be free from England. We're not going to put up with this any longer. And they signed the death warrant, which was called the Declaration of Independence. I know that's not real scriptural, but it fits real good. It's for good. When you sign your name as Christian, you take a little quill pen and you dip it in the ink. And you sign your name. You should you have become part of a revolutionary force. See, the devil tries to take this land and tries to convince everybody that it is his earth. It is his way or no way. And God says, no, baby, that's not right. It's, I'm the one that created this place. I'm the one that's going to destroy it. You're the one that's, you're, you have no power over this earth. Only God has power over this earth. Oh, now, Brother Jeff, now listen to me. Listen to me. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. What does it say? In the beginning, who created? What did he create? Hmm. Can you find a scripture where the devil created one thing? There's no scripture where the devil ever created one thing. He perverted the things which God created, but he never created one thing. He never, he's, he's changed what, what God intended it to be, but he's never created a thing. So this is, not, this is not the devil's earth. This is not the devil's planet. This is not the devil's land. I don't care what the devil has told you. And I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what everybody says. I don't care what the news says. I don't care what the national news says. I don't care what the newspaper or anybody else says. I don't care what the, what the internet says. This is not the devil's land. It is not his. It is God's and it is ours to, ours to possess. And we will simply possess it. And we will simply go out and possess it. And simply go out and do what God has called us to do. I'm going to read this to you. The Spirit of God says to me this. It is time to possess the land. But my people are not ready for the rigors of war. Right. Better hear me. The enemy of God does not give in 
or give over what he feels he possesses without a fight. He will not simply turn away from the possession because we say we want it. It, it is the Spirit of God that commands the enemy to flee. It is the Spirit of God in us that destroys the yoke of the devil. Not our loud speaking. Not our religious rhetoric. Come on now. Not of our pleading to God. It is the very presence of God. The manifestation of His Spirit coming from the inside of us that stops the devil. It stops his advances. It causes him real hard in the evil empire of, his, of, his, of the devil. It is, it is the manifestation of God's presence. Whenever the Holy Ghost is moving and you can feel it, what do you think that is? That is the manifestation of God's presence in the building. It is not simply because we got a chill bump or I feel bad so I'm crying. It is a manifestation of God's presence in a, in a group of, of believers. It is, God, it is God himself putting his presence in the place. It is God himself showing up as we used to call it. Let God show up and show out. Anybody remember that? Let God show up and show out. It is his very presence. It is his very being. I am very much aware that, that anointing is tangible. You can feel it. Feel it. A lot of times I'll be preaching and I just... So if you can feel it and it's real and it's tangible, yeah. it is transparent. Yeah. See what, what are you saying, Brother Jeff? I'll just what I'm saying. The anointing of God that is on me to preach is transferable to your very presence in this place. What I mean by that is when I speak with words with the anointing on them, something different happens to them if I'm just talking. Yeah. Something changes. It's, it's, the, 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 when, I, when I'm speaking and the anointing is flowing out of the words that I say, what happens is this, it, 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 it infects your spirit. So Brother Buster was talking about in Sunday school class about sometimes that I, I, uh, people are looking around and not paying attention whenever I'm preaching, if it bothers me. Sometimes it does, I'll be honest with you, but most of the time it doesn't because God's not talking to you. He's talking to the person that's listening. If you're listening, God's going to be talking. For those who really want an answer, God's talking. For those who really are concerned about what's going on in their lives, God's speaking. But for whatever reason, if, if you're not interested, God's not interested in talking to you anyway. If you're not interested, because you've got more other things to do. Right. So what, what I'm saying is this. Anointing is transferable and is tangible. Yes. Listen. Can you stand? Can you possess what God has given you to possess? I'm just asking. Can you be a watchman on the walls of this church? Not only a watchman, but can you be a protector right. of this body? Yes. You better be. Can you be a protector? Can you be a, a, a protector of the body? It's the Spirit of God inside of you that shows you, hey, this is what's coming. We need to pray. Got an attack coming. You need to pray. I guess God will let you know. God will let you know. Listen, do you have the ability to call on Him and He hear you? Come on, church! Amen. Do you have the ability to call on God and God hear with your voice and God answer your prayer? Amen. As our forefathers did before. Go back to that, Joshua 18 and whatever it was. 18 and 1. 18 and 3. Do you have the ability to call upon God and God has the ability to say, What? What do you want? Joshua said to the children of Israel, How long are you slack to go possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers had given you? Our forefathers claimed this, this place, this city of Seminole. They said, right, we're going to have it. God, you're going you're to give it to us. God, you're gonna have, we're going to have this place. God, we're going to anoint this oil in this place. We're going to walk around this place. We claim Seminole as yours. Yes. Amen. Amen. How long will we slack? And not go possess what God has given us by our fathers. I'm just asking. How long are we going to be slack and just hang out and just hope that the Lord comes and we don't have to do nothing? How long are we going to, are we just, going to just, just, just be silent? How long are we going to not matter? How long are we just going to be that? Oh, no, no, Craig Fried Chicken is that church two blocks east. 
or west. <coughs> you know, I, where, where's Tim the Parade is at? It, it's two blocks west of Kirk's Park Station. I can give a straw, it's, it's a block now. How long are we going to not be relevant? Just ask him. How long are we going to stand around and just be slack or going to possess the land? See, see, everybody looking at me like I'm stupid. I'm just trying to tell you something. God's trying to get us to possess a, a thing. Listen, this is just confirmation to me that's writing on the wall. It's just confirmation to me that we're on the right track. For if we weren't doing anything, no one would care. For if, if, if the devil hadn't been stirred up a little bit, he wouldn't throw tennis shoes on our, on our power lines. And he wouldn't, he wouldn't put paint on our, on our wall. And, and I'm just telling you, and for somebody to, to have the audacity to write on God's wall, I, I, God let their fingers fall off and we'll heal them. God, I, I, just, I just ask you, I'm just telling you right now, we, we have to understand that this place is a possession. The devil thinks it's his. But God knows it's his. And so here's the hear me. The devil thinks that he's just he's just another another little brick in the wall. He's just another this is another little mark of mine. I'm just gonna take this. This will be mine. I'll, I'll spray paint my name on it. It'll be mine. But listen, uh, can I share with you what anointing is? Anointing means you've been you've been painted with a sweet smelling savor. Oh see, nobody understands that. You have been painted. With a sweet smelling savor. So even in your darkest time. When nobody knows what you're going through, when nobody can find you, God. Smell my mind. But here's the trick. The devil can smell you too. And he hates you because you smell like God. Do you understand, young people? Young people. We ain't young no more. You understand? You understand? My people. <laughs> The reason that we never did fit in with that devil's crowd is because we've been painted when we weren't even looking. When we was trying to get away from the paint, the anointing of God was in the house and we got painted with a sweet smelling savor. And the reason we didn't fit in with that devil's crowd is because the devil hated the way we smelled. He can smell God on you. I don't care what depths of depravity you went into. God can still smell, I mean the devil can still smell God on your very presence, on your very being. That's the, listen, that's the thing that kept you from falling over the edge. Don't you understand? That's the very thing that kept you from going too far. That's the very thing that kept you from losing your mind completely. That's the thing that kept you from, the, from having a reprobate mind because the anointing of God was on your life and you didn't even know it. You had no idea. You thought you were just one of the guys. And God said, no, no. That one's mine. I can smell it. You know how many people are sitting in bars to get ready to watch football today and they think they're just one of the guys? And God's like, no, that one's mine. That one's mine. That one's mine. This one's mine. And they don't know why they don't fit in. They don't know why they can't do what everybody else does. They don't have any idea. But God said, God, that was sweet smelling savior. See, we don't think about it like that. We just think we just are on more legs. You got to do it. Oh, I'm, God's like, baby, I got you. Okay. Got you. See, I, I don't remember what you're doing. And if you die in a condition you're in, yeah, you want to go to hell. But I've got the anointing that's painted on you because I can find you because I need you. I need you. See, just because you're anointed don't mean you're right. Right. That's worth the price of admission right there. Yeah. <laughs> Just because you're anointed don't mean you're right, King Saul. Right. Right. Yeah. David couldn't touch him. Right. Why? I shall not touch the Lord's anointed. Right. Saul did everything he could to kill David. <laughs> Threw spears at him, tried to kill him, and everyone chased him all around the countryside. Yeah. David cut off a piece of his apron. Yeah. Then had to apologize for that. I shall not touch the Lord's anointed. Just because you're anointed don't mean you're right. There's a lot of anointed people. They just ain't right. They just living wrong. I'm trying to get on. I'm trying to get on. Okay, here we go. Just as our forefathers have done before us, do we have the ability to reach God? 
Are you willing to reach way deep inside of you? It's going to take some deep stuff. See? Can I just share? It's going to take some digging because we buried it so low. We pushed that anointing down. We pushed it in. I don't want to be like them. I, I want to do my own thing. I, I'm just going to be a regular Christian. Yeah. And we buried it. But that gift is burning inside of me. That gift is buried there. Because the gifts and callings of God are what? Without repentance. What God placed there stays there. And in your belly. Though you think you've pressed it down and you've shaken it down and you've gotten rid of it. Though you think that, no, God doesn't use me that, in that situation. And though you think that you've pushed all those, all out of the way. God, I don't want it, I don't want it, I don't want it. Still yet, there are times when it flares up. Yeah. Hear me. Are you willing to dig deep and stir that gift up in you? No, it's going to take more than me laying hands on you and knocking you the floor. It's going to take more than that. Right. It's going to take more than five minutes at an altar. It's going to take some time to stir that thing up again. It's going to take some want to. It's going to take some, I, I, I don't know what's wrong with me. I, I, I want to cry. I don't know why. I want, to, I want to shout. There's no reason to shout. It's going to take some of that stuff. It's going to take that stirring of that spirit again. It's going to take that stirring of the Holy Ghost again. It's going to take that from, that, from your belly shall flow what? Rivers of what? Living waters. Out of your belly shall flow because it's inside of you. Yeah. God has placed it inside of you for a reason. And it's time to awaken it. And listen, this call that I'm preaching to you this morning and this last Sunday is not for the timid or the weak. It's not for the timid or the weak. This call is for those who have seen the other side of Jordan. That are looking at Jericho as an impenetrable fortress. They're looking at the calling of the promised land of God. See, Israel had a promised land. We've got a land of promises. Hear me? Israel had a land of flowing with milk and honey. God said, I, I, I promised you this, and this is what I'll do for you. If you will do this for me, I shall do this for you. That's another sermon for another time. Those that believe that God can take them to where they've never been before. I started this message off last Sunday by saying this. Too long we've been scared, scared of success. That God will take me somewhere I don't know how to get out of. See, we, we Hansel and Gretel. We leave a bread trail so we can find our way out. But we don't know the Holy Ghost is scooping those breadcrumbs out. <laughs> trying to find then we turn around and can't find our way out and then we're lost and... see what's going to happen See, what happens is this if I get into the place where God would have me to be a place I've never been I don't know how to get out of there yeah. see we're, we're, we're good about going into the anointing that we know yeah. we're good about going to the places that we've been right. we're good about telling interpretation we've been there Okay, we can do that. That's, okay, we got that, God. We got that. But don't step any further than that, God, because we ain't never been there. We ain't there. I don't know if I can find my way out of there. I don't know if I can find my way out of there. So, so instead of hassling and grumbling, what we need to do is just say, okay, God, I'm following after you. I'm following you. Wherever you take me, God, I'm going to go. Amen. Ooh, that's scary. It is. That is scary. It really is. Because we're scared to be successful with God. Because he's taking us to places. Do you know there's 365 fear knots in the Bible? One for every day. 365 fear knots. You know why? Because God knows we're fearful. God knows we don't know what's going on around the corner, so we're fearful in the corner. God knows that he, his creator is a fearful, because we like to know we have to, we have to make plans. But God sometimes says, you know what? I'm your plan. I'm your plan. Listen. Are there those still, those still, that believe to take them where they've never been before? This is 
a call to the very elect of God. This is a call to stay hungry for the things of God. To seek His face every day. Not Sunday and Wednesday only, but every day. Not for a title of recognition. But to seek Him for the kingdom of God's sake. No. I don't need face time behind a pulpit to serve God. Don't. I'm going to serve Him no matter what. I'm going to serve Him no matter what. I don't need to be in public to be seen of men. I want to be in private to be seen of God. I want, to be, I want Him to see me in my face before Him when nobody else is around. I want to see Him... I want him to see me worshiping him when there's not any music. I, I want to see him worshiping him when there's not any, not, not any, you know, give him thanks for when I'm going through a trial and a tribulation, giving him thanks for that. I want, to, I, want, I want him to see me. I want him to see me just as, 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 as I am. And, and just, you know, what was it that, that the Bible says about Adam and Eve? They were naked and not ashamed. And, and God strips away all the stuff and he sees you just as you are. Yeah. Right. He doesn't, say, he doesn't see you as what you perceive everybody to be. He's what you, your perception that everybody else that you want them to see. He sees you as you truly are. He sees you from face value. He sees everything in you. He sees all the challenges that you face. He sees every sin that you've ever committed that's not, not under the blood of Jesus Christ. He sees from the beginning to the end of your life. He sees everything about you. He sees from the, the numbers of hairs on your head to the, to the toenails that fell off. Whatever. He, 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 he sees everything about you. But here's the cool thing. He still says, I love you and I want you. He still anoints you. Even though, even though you do sin in your life, He still anoints you. Even though you've been backslidden before, He still anoints you. Even though you've turned your back and put your, put your share in with His arch enemy, the devil, He still anoints you and still loves you, still places His hand on you, still rewards you like you did it yourself. I'm just telling you this morning that we have got to possess what is God's to possess. I'm, I'm trying to get there. I'm trying to get there. Possess means this, to own something, to have, to own something, to have something as an ability, to have something as an ability, quality, or characteristic, to have knowledge of something, to have, uh, to have or acquire skill of knowledge of something, to take control of somebody, to take control of somebody so that the person's behavior or thinking is affected. To fill somebody with an emotion. To cause somebody to be influenced by something, especially an emotion. Uh, to control feeling. To control yourself uh, or a feeling. To, uh, number eight, to seize something. To gain or seize something. To gain it. Listen, Genesis 1 said the world is God's. He made it. He gives the land to who He will. Right. He told them to go walk and wherever your foot, wherever your foot shall tread, I will give it to you. That's what he told the children of Israel, right? You walk in the land, and wherever your foot lands, that's yours. It's mine to give, he said. It's God's to give. It's not the devil's to relinquish. It's God's to give. Okay. Some of, you, some of you believe that, some of you don't. That's okay. That's all right. Here's the deal. It's God's to bless us with. The people around this, this city are God's souls. Every soul belongs to the Lord. Look it up, it's in the Old Testament. Every soul belongs to the Lord. The devil has never one time breathed life into a soul and made it a living being. But God himself breathes life into every living soul. They are not the devil's. They are not his to have. They are not his to possess. It is ours to go get. They are, they are ours to go possess. They are ours to have. They are God's people. Okay. He gives to who he wants to. He gives to who he wants to. The devil's empire is simply this. The devil rules with, with, uh, with fear and deception. My mother-in-law told me when I was a young kid, fear is simply faith in the devil. I remember that. I was young when she told me that. Fear is faith in the devil. Now I'm talking about being scared of the dark. Talking about when God says do something and you're fearful because what, what's going to happen? Talking about fear that way, not common sense fear. You know, you're going to jump off a building. Talking about doing the things of God. He still believes in the old empire rules of government. 
This is what the old empire rules of governing were this. You're entitled to rule as much of the earth as you control. World War I, okay? World War I. Germany functioned after those empires, the German Empire. And they thought as long as much, they didn't think anything was wrong with going and possession, that is, took control of all that, all that land, not World War II, World War I, okay, World War I. It was an empire rule. They thought, hey, we control it, it's ours. That was the old empire rule. Okay, if you let's have a Persians, Greeks, Romans, it was the same way. If I can control it, it's mine. I don't care what the people say, if I can control it, it's mine. And so that's how, that's how it used to be done. And so the devil has the same empire rule. If I can control it, it's mine. If he can control you, you're his. If he can control your family, that family's his. If he can control your church, that church is his. If he can control that city, that city is his. And so what he does is he tries the old empire rule thing. But Jesus messed that up. Jesus messed that up. Jesus said, no, no, no. No, no, no. It's not yours to possess. It is God's to be created to possess. Are you guys hearing what I'm telling you? Y'all are looking at me like I'm stupid this morning. Y'all mad at me or something other? Here, 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 this, this, let me ask you something. Are you ready to understand what I'm trying to tell you? Yes. That God himself possesses this earth? And that little speck of dirt called Seminole is his? And that little speck of dirt called Oklahoma is his? And that little speck of dirt called the United States of America is his? And it's not anybody else's? And things have changed and people have changed. I just, I just remember growing up, and Joey can attest to this, I remember growing up going to school, going to high school, and everybody had their rifles and their rifle racks in the back of their, in the back of their trucks because they'd gone deer hunting before they went to school. I remember that. Everybody had their guns out in the parking lot showing, they were showing off their guns. That was 1985, 6, 7. That wasn't 1942. That was just 25 years ago. And I, and I took out my new gun and thought, man, oh, what cool. No one ever thought anything about it. Because you get a man's heart right, he can sleep on a stack of guns 55 feet thick and never think about hurting nobody. Right. But we've decided that God's not important anymore. Then all of a sudden, 30 years later, everybody shoots people. I can't figure it out. Oh, that's really, it's quite a mystery. It's such a hard thing to figure. I don't understand. Anyway. Anyway. Last verses I'm going to read. I'll get you out of here. The devil is a what? He's a thief, right? John chapter 10, verse 1. This is my last grouping of scriptures. I just want to prove this thing to you in scripture. John, John chapter 10, verse 1. Verily, very I say to you, he that enters not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. We know that the devil is a thief and a robber, and, and, he, and we know that, that Jesus. Can I just can I just interject, parenthetically interject? How do you get born on this planet? Most of you have a mother. Okay, all right. Okay, but most of us had a mother, right? Most, most of us were birthed, right? Okay, just check it. Right. And so there's a gate you go through to get onto this planet, correct? Right. Okay. How did the devil get here? Huh? It was tossed from heaven, right? Right. So did he come in here legally or illegally? He wasn't birthed here. Jesus was birthed here. The devil was not. He was thrown here. He was cast here. He's a thief and a robber. He is the he's the he's the, he climbed up some other way. You can't just read it, you gotta read it. He came up some other way. He climbed up some other way. He didn't come to this earth through 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 a woman's uh, through a woman's womb. He came through this earth because God said, get out of here, throw it, throw it down here and cast it down here. He's here illegally. I'm here legally. Jesus was here legally. 
Jesus was birthed into this thing. And we have a robber who's a thief and a robber who came some other way. Okay, okay. So if a thief be found out, listen, now listen, he's not of the shepherd in John 10 and 10. John 10 and 10. The thief cometh not but to kill, to steal, and, I'm sorry, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and they might have it more abundantly. He is not come with the shepherd. The, the devil is not here because of the shepherd. The devil is not here because he came here legally. The devil is here to kill, steal, and destroy. Still kill and destroy. Jesus said, I birthed here to give you life and life more abundantly. I'm here for a reason. The devil's here to mess you up. And in then, uh, Exodus chapter 22, verse 7. If a thief is found out, what must he do? Just ask him. If a man shall deliver you of his neighbor money or stuff to keep, and it be stolen out of a man's house, if the thief be found, let him pay double. Yeah. I'm going to sit right here, and I'm going to preach to my sister. Let me tell you something. Who's the thief? How's he been found out? So did he get here legally or illegally? Yeah. Yeah. I proved scripturally he got here illegally. Yeah. So I know who he is, right? Yeah. Why do I allow him to continue to take my stuff? Yeah. Right. Why do I allow him to continue to take my blessings? Why do I allow him to continue to, to take my land? Why do I continue to let him take the people that God has ordained for this place and just let, them, let their life be hell on earth? Why do I allow them to continually let him just think that he owns everything? He said he got to pay me double. I didn't say it, Exodus says it. All right. Romans 12, 19. This is my last one. I'll let y'all go. I'm going to hurt you. I don't want to hurt nobody. I don't hurt nobody's brain. Here we go. Romans 12, 19. Dear, dearly beloved. I'm sorry. Uh, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place to the wrath. Place under wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay sin. I know, I'm not going to sit here. Check. Get, put your thinking caps on, turn them on real tight. You with me? Strap the chin. Get on. Ready? The thief comes some other way. Not through the sheep gate, but some other way. Jesus said, I came to give you life, life more abundant. The thief came out to the steal, to kill, and to destroy. Verse 22, chapter 22 of Exodus, verse 7. If the thief be found out, he has to repay double. Here's the cool thing. Are you ready for the cool thing? I don't have to make him repay. Go back to my scripture here. Go back. Last one I gave you. Kill him. What was it, Jeff? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Romans 12, 19. Hey, go. I don't have to make you pay. Vengeance on yourself. But rather give place unto wrath. What is written? Vengeance is mine. I will repay it is not my job, Sister Cindy, to fight the devil. The devil is defeated. It is my job. It is my job to believe in the work that Jesus said it is finished when it was finished and I'm ready. And the devil is a defeated foe. It is my job to resist the devil that he will flee. But it is not my job to say, you better give it my stuff. It's God's job to say, give me their stuff and give it back to me. But I have to believe in what God's word says. Now about five or six of y'all don't believe me. That's okay. It's my job. I'm trying to hurry to get you out of here. I promise. I'm sorry to keep you so long this morning. Hear me. I just want to get finished with this. Hear me. God said, vengeance is his. I will repay, saith the Lord. Repay what? 
what the devil has taken from you. Whatever it is, the land that the devil has taken and, and the, 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 the land the devil possesses that, that he thinks he possesses, but it is truly ours. The things in your life that have been taken away from your life. Those things are not the devil's. Those things are yours because we found out who the thief was. I, I exposed the thief to you. I showed you what to do, how to get your stuff, and what it is that the, 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 the devil will do. And hear me. Hear me. Please hear me for five more minutes, please. We have got to simply go to God and live for Him and say, God, I'm one of yours. He calls me dearly beloved. My dear, beloved person, my son, my daughter, I love you so much. This is, but net, rather, give place under wrath. Don't let me. Because I'm telling you right now, have you ever seen the devil jack some people up? I have. Okay, you remember this story? And I'll quit. I promise I'll quit right here. Here's the story. We want what they have. We want the Holy Ghost that they have. And the devil said, Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. Well, who are you? And he jacks the people up. See, we go in the name of the Lord, and He knows that name. So what I'm telling you this is telling you this morning is this. Y'all looking at me? Some of y'all looking at me like I'm crazy. That's okay. I've been crazy. It's time to step out of our little comfort areas. Begin to do what God's called us to do. Well, yeah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't that great? Isn't it fun to come to church on Sunday morning? It's fun to come to church on Sunday morning. Thank you, Jesus. I'm just trying to challenge you. I'm just trying to stir that thing in you. I'm trying to stir it. I'm trying to help you. I want you to be better. I want me to be there. I want me to be, to be what, what God's called me to be. And then send you people this We stand at a strategic inflection point. What that means is a crossroads. We can be what we've always been. We can be what God's called us to be. We can be the little church on the corner forever, or we can be a mighty move of God on that church in the corner. Yeah. It's whatever you want to be. It's whatever, you, it's whatever this congregation chooses to be, that's what we can be. Because it takes people to do the things of God. It, it takes people dedicated to God. I, I told you this, I'm, I'm going to tell you one more time. I'm going to find me somebody that's going to stand. I'm going to find me some people that are going to stand and say, you know what, I, I, I just believe God can do that's believing. That's believing. Uh, listen, God don't need everybody. He just needs somebody. Amen. Amen. And it's never been, he's never had any, he's, not, he's never had everybody, but he's always had a remnant. Amen. He's always had people. Yes. Amen. 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 I believe he's got a people right here. I believe I'm looking at a people. That he's got. Amen. Amen. Love you this morning.